This is where proteins are separated from each other. They are sorted. There is a mechanism which somehow knows that this class of proteins have to go to the cell surface. There's another class of proteins which are not sent directly to the cell surface. They will eventually end up at the cell surface, but they are packed into specific granules, and I will talk about them in a few minutes, okay? And they sit inside the cell for as long as it takes until, unless there is a signal which comes from the outside which triggers the fusion of those vesicles with the cell surface. You see, these are the endoplasmic reticular membranes that I talked about. These are the ER exit sites. So we're looking at a protein that is going out of the cell, okay? And see, this is the ER exit site. The proteins are collected into these ER exit sites. You will see soon, this is a transport intermediate or a vesicle. You see them moving and they come to the Golgi. And don't, we can talk about these tracks later. So this is the Golgi, so they have all come into the Golgi. And now they will leave from the Golgi again by vesicles. Okay. And they seem to be moving on tracks. But in 1990, Roberto Sitia in Italy found that interleukin 1 beta, which is one of the key cytokines, is secreted from cells, but it doesn't have a signal sequence. So how does it go out? There are not as many as the proteins that, uh, th that enter the ER and are then secreted. I would say at this stage, maybe there are 50 proteins that are secreted unconventionally, but these are very important proteins if you think about it, or if, once I give you the names. These are proteins, cytokines, interleukins, for example. Proteins such as FGF, fibroblast growth factor, which is required for blood vessel formation in angiogenesis. Okay. We work on a protein called ACB1. It's an acyl CoA binding protein, which we think might be very, very crucial for regulating, amongst other things, just how many cells are there in the vicinity of a given cell. So regulating the size of a tissue. Well, these proteins use very, very clever approach. What they do is they rely on a cell's system called autophagy. They form a structure called an autophagosome. This autophagosome will form a small vesicle around the material that has to be autophagocytosed, meaning the material that has to be eaten up by the cell. These autophagosomes usually go and fuse with a vacuole or in animal cells, it's called the lysosome. Anything that enters the lysosome is degraded. So if you stick your head inside the lysosome, then what comes out would be nothing, okay? It'll be just amino acids, sugars, and lipids. So if this material is to be secreted, it makes no sense for it to go into the vacuole because everything will be chewed up. Now, this unconventional secretion we found also uses the same structure called the autophagosome but the autophagosome never fuses with the vacuole. It somehow evades fusion with the vacuole, but it instead fuses with another structure called an endosome. Now it has become a part of the endosome. This structure then matures into another compartment, and this compartment is called multivesicular body because it has many, many vesicles. This structure fuses with the cell surface. Okay, it fused with the cell surface and this vesicle that started here is now outside. And when the membrane containing this cargo is outside, the membrane breaks and the cargo is released. Okay. We don't really know why cells use such different pathways. Why do cells have to use conventional secretion for a large number of proteins and unconventional secretion for another set of proteins. But certain viruses, such as coronavirus, SARS, that we all know and heard of, CMV, cytomegalovirus, they, we believe, use similar processes because they also start their life in the cytoplasm and they go straight out of the cytoplasm to the outside of the cells. And what I've told you is that there are steps in the secretory pathway. Most proteins begin their life in the endoplasmic reticulum. They go to the Golgi and are secreted. They're, this transport is mediated by small vesicles. Sometimes you need to make big vesicles for big proteins. 
and cells have evolved mechanisms to ensure that big proteins are transported <coughs> as efficiently as and when needed, just, just like the small molecules, and we have identified proteins involved in this process. And I've also told you that there is a very fancy mechanism by which proteins are somehow sorted. You should go there, you should go there, et cetera, et cetera. It makes no sense for a cell to send the wrong protein to a wrong place because it causes havoc for both the protein that ends up the wrong place and the compartment that receives the wrong protein. So these events are tightly regulated. So we are, we are learning and we are making progress. We can break the system into smallest possible units and identify components involved in this process to get a better molecular understanding, which after all is geared towards an understanding of what goes wrong. And when something does go wrong, we think with our kind of knowledge, we should be able to utilize that knowledge to develop valuable therapeutics, whether it be for asthma or cystic fibrosis or skin biogenesis or for angiogenesis or you know, knowing the size of a tissue. And these are important uh, issues that, that we need to focus on. And, and we hope that in the next 10 or 15 years, we'll have our hand, we'll have a very comprehensive understanding of this process. That, I think I will stop and, um, and um, gladly answer any simple, easy questions that you might have for me. Thank you very much. <clears throat>